Welcome to our lecture online. Here in example 3b, we're going to do the exact same problem we did in 3a, but instead of using the f of x method, we're now going to use the f of y method. So our function was y equals x to the 3 halves power, but we can convert that into x equals y to the 2 thirds power. We simply multiply or not take the raise both sides to the 3 halves power, no, actually 2 thirds power, to get this function instead of that function. So instead of writing f of x equals x to the 3 halves, we can now write that f of y is equal to y to the 2 thirds. Now we take the derivative of that, we get the derivative of the function is 2 thirds y to the minus 1 third, and we square that, we get 4 ninths y to the minus 2 thirds. So to get the arc length from 0 0.00 to 1 1, we're going to solve for this integral right here. However, in this case, we, the limits are going to be from the function of a to the function of b. Or actually, how do I write that a little bit more specific? Let's see here. So we're going to write this from y equals 0 to y equals 1. So that way it's specific that we use y limits instead of x limits in this integral. Again, it's the integral of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared times dx. Now in this case, the derivative of the function is going to be this instead of that. And hopefully we get the same answer because I wrote down the answer we got last time. We should get the exact same answer solving it like this. So the arc length is going to be equal to the integrals from 0 to 1, these are y limits, times the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared, which is 4 ninths y to the minus 2 thirds power whoop, times dx. And this, make it a little bit bigger, there we go. All right, now, that mathematical trick again, because whenever we're dealing with that radical, that square root sign, it's kind of tricky. What we're going to do is we're going to factor out a 1 ninth, take out the integral sign that becomes one third, so L is equal to one third times integral from zero to one. The square root of, this becomes nine plus four y to the minus two thirds. Thank you, dx. All right, next we're going to factor out a y to the minus two thirds. Comes out here, becomes y to the minus one third, so we have L is equal to one third times the integral from 0 to 1, we get y to the minus 1 third times the square root of 9y to the, hmm, that needs to be 2 thirds here, plus 4 dx. Let's see, if we multiply this times this, we get 9, this times this, we get plus 4 y to the minus 2 thirds. Okay, now we're good. The reason why we did that is we need a proper differential. Let me give you a little bit more room here. And um, because, let's write it like this, here's my red pen, if u is equal to what's inside the radical sign, 9y to the 2 thirds plus 4. There we go. So if we let u equals what's inside here, now what's the proper du? Well, du will now be equal to 9 times 2 over 3, y to the minus 1 third power, and the plus 4 disappears and then we need to multiply that times the dy. Okay, so that means that du is equal to nine divided by three is three times two, which is six y to the minus one third dy. So this is the proper du when this is a u. So here we have a u, now we have the proper du. I have a y to the minus one third, but I need a six. I need to multiply times six and divide by six. There we go. And now this added to this. To ah, yeah. Oh, let, let me move the 6 over like this so it's a little clearer. There we go. 6dx. So this plus this is part of your du. And now we're able to integrate. So now when we integrate, we get L is equal to 1 over 18 times. So we have the square root of this integrated. So now this becomes 9y to the 2 thirds plus 4 
to the 3 halves power instead of 1 half power divided by 3 halves evaluated from 0 to 1. So here we have 118 divided by 3 halves, that's the same as multiplying by its inverse. So this, this gives us 1 over 18 times 2 thirds times. When I plug in the upper limit, I get 9 plus 4 to the 3 halves power, that's 13 to the 3 halves power minus, when I plug in the lower limit, this becomes 0, we get 4 to the 3 halves power. And then, since I'm out of room, let me continue over here. So, 118 times 2 thirds, it becomes 1, this becomes 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So, I end up with 1 over 27 times 13 to the 3 halves power minus 4 to the 3 halves power. And that's why I wrote it like this in the first example, because we wanted to show that this was exactly the same answer in both cases. Now, obviously 3a was the easier approach, so there's no reason why we should have gone to this approach, but this at least illustrates that it doesn't matter which approach you take, both of them should give you the exact same answer. And so from now on, sometimes it's easier to transition to the function of y method instead of the function of x method if the function makes it easier to find a solution that way. At least, you know, you get the same answer either way.